What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are, and they definitely know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I push T like, wait. I push T like, wait. Y'all, not Ice Cube bringing receipts to expose Diddy for forcing his sons to be like him. Now, y'all know how Diddy has been brought to the stake for these past couple of months, and the feds have opened up an official investigation. But well, y'all might want to throw his son, Christian Combs, right up into it because Christian just got sued by a woman for allegedly essaying her. The father and son being sued for this crime is absolutely crazy, y'all. But according to Ice Cube, we really shouldn't be that shocked because Diddy allegedly put his son up to it. According to Ice Cube, Diddy allegedly forced his son to SA a victim. And the real reason for this is going to blow your mind. And now that Christian is now in deep trouble, word on the streets is that he is allegedly planning to expose Diddy as his mastermind. And y'all won't believe the stories that Christian is finally telling about Diddy, cause it's insane. Uh, does Diddy really allegedly force his sons to take part in his SA as a weird rite of passage? When I say work with us, is to stop working against us. Stop doing that bullshit behind the scenes that we know you're doing. Y'all, Yo, when I tell y'all that this situation with Diddy keeps getting crazier and more insane every single time we get an update, I'm not kidding. Cause not only did Diddy just catch some other insane charges, but now both of his sons have allegedly have charges of their own. And it's like it's a family affair or something like that because how on earth is a father and his two sons all accused of doing the same thing? It's crazy. Currently, Quincy is the only one who hasn't got any charges. But then he's not Diddy's biological son, so that might have something to do with it. But in case y'all missed this tea and don't know what I'm talking about, I'm referring to how Diddy's son Christian Combs recently got sued by a woman who claimed that he allegedly SA'd her during a Combs family holiday back in December 2022. But the crazy part about all this is that from the way that she recounted the events, it sounds kind of similar to the way that Diddy operates. You know, the whole get the woman drunk or high and then proceed to SA. All five people who have accused Diddy of doing unspeakable things to them accused him of doing the same thing. In Cassie's lawsuit, she exposed how Diddy used to force her to allegedly take some nose candy or booger sugar and lots of alcohol. And then he would force her to be intimate with his S worker that he had hired. I'm talking about the part where Cassie's lawsuit said, Mr. Combs always supplied Miss Ventura and the escort with copious amounts of drugs before and during FOs. Miss Ventura was given ecstasy, nose candy, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FOs, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an FO to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. Miss Ventura was required to dress up in lingerie for an FO. Now the second woman who sued him, Joey Dickerson Neal, also claimed that he allegedly spiked her drink with something while they were on a date. And she claimed that the encounter happened while she was in college and that Diddy hounded her for weeks to go on a date with him. And when she finally gave in, he took her to a restaurant where he allegedly slipped something into her drink. According to reports, the complaint alleges Combs intentionally drugged Dickerson Neal, leaving her unable to stand or walk. The suit said she left her drink unattended with him at the restaurant. And afterward, under alleged pressure from Combs, she took a hit from a blunt. They then drove to a music studio the suit stated. When Dickerson Neal couldn't exit the car, Combs allegedly took her to a place he was staying to SA her, according to the filing. But even worse, y'all, she revealed in the lawsuit that Diddy had made a video of him SAing her, and he shared it around. Reports have it that days later, a male friend named Devante Swing, a member of the popular 90s R&B group Jodeci, revealed to Joey that he viewed an adult tape along with other people, according to the suit. Joey said Swing feared his band would lose its record deal if he spoke against Combs. But the wild thing is that Cassie also claimed in her lawsuit that Diddy used to record her whenever he forced her into freak-offs. And even though she deleted the videos, he always had backups and he would recover the deleted videos. The court document said, while Miss Ventura quickly deleted any photographs or video of sex acts if they were taken on her phone, Mr. Combs repeatedly made clear that he retained many videos of Miss Ventura during FOs, 
even when she deleted the videos. Mr. Combs would tell Ms. Ventura that he was able to recover deleted videos from her devices. On one occasion, he sat next to her on a flight and made her watch a video she thought she had deleted, reinforcing her inability to escape and the immense power he held over her. And just like he allegedly sent Joey's videos around, he did the same thing allegedly to Cassie, because 50 Cent claimed that Diddy was allegedly sending these videos around in Hollywood. On telephone and shit, after the main shit. Right, right. And, and the nigga be like, matter of fact, they sent me the girl pictures, like pictures of this girl, like, not the shit that y'all saw. Worse, way worse. <laughs> Wow. Are you kidding me, yo? Like, penetration pictures and, and... Nah, come on, man. I really kind of felt like those photographs were not happening because of Cassie. I felt like they was happening because of Puffy. Right, right. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Because when a, a girl moves from a man and she upgrades, niggas be insecure, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They start feeling some kind of way, especially like, like a third woman also claimed that Diddy and his friend Aaron Hall allegedly s aid her and her friend after they met the men at a party. According to reports, while at Hall's apartment, Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into being intimate with Combs. After Combs finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in the bed, shocked and traumatized. While Jane Doe was trying to get dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Jane Doe to be intimate with him. And y'all, when he was done, he and Aaron allegedly switched and Aaron essayed Jane Doe, while Diddy essayed her friend, according to the documents. A fourth woman also filed a lawsuit where she claimed that Diddy and a group of his friends, including former bad boy president Harvey Pierre, allegedly essayed her in Diddy's studio in New York after she was picked up in Baltimore by Harvey Pierre. The lawsuit said, while at the studio, Miss Doe was essayed by Mr. Combs, third assailant, and Mr. Pierre, in that order. While Mr. Combs was essaying Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched him as hard as she could. Mr. Combs then watched on as third assailant, who Miss Doe had not even realized had begun, essayed Miss Doe as she told him to stop. After third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn and then forced her to give him oral action, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe. After all this came out, Diddy eventually had to release a statement where he denied the allegations and said, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Mm hmm. And don't get me started on Lil Rod's accusations, because he had plenty to say in his lawsuit, and surprise, surprise, he told the same exact type of story about how Diddy allegedly drugged him up, gave him alcohol, and allegedly essayed him at a party. The court document said, on or about February 2nd, 2023 incident, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two S workers and Mr. Combs. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. He then claimed that Diddy allegedly groomed him and was trying to pass him around to his friends like Cuba Gooding Jr. Speaking of Cuba though, TMZ reported that Jones claims Diddy introduced him to Cuba Gooding Jr. on Diddy's yacht and Cuba allegedly began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thigh near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Dill, also had something to say about Diddy and Cuba. It's also, you know, a legend that he met Cuban Gooding Jr. through Diddy on Diddy Yacht. And it even got to a point where he started touching him on his, you know, upper inner thigh near his groin, according to him. Did you see the picture? Nah, I didn't get to see it, but, uh... Oh, my God. Coop, yo, listen to me, man. I don't know if it was... What they call it when you take two pictures and they put it together, you know, like that? They, they, what they, what they call it when the, they put the pictures together and it don't belong together, but they put it together? Whatever. Side by side? Yeah, whatever they call that sh Coop, Coop, uh, 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 Cuban Gooden Jr. was so close to that man, I would thought that was his lady. This is the picture that Gene That's was how close he was to and him. Yeah, and then his hands all sus. on his leg. Gene also hinted that Diddy might have put the idea in Cuba's head that Lil Rod was fresh meat. So you seeing on pictures, do you believe his claims? Yeah, I believe his claims. 
he, he, somebody put something in Cuban Gooding Jr. ear that this was fresh meat or see can you break him or see can you do something because don't know other man be that close to no another man man for the for that reason come on bro that's crazy so according to this not only did diddy sa women but he also allegedly forced other people to sa as well and according to ice cube that is exactly what's happening to diddy's sons but we're going to get into that in a little bit just like cassie diddy allegedly forced Lil rod to hire s workers and be intimate with them the court documents went on to say that Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting S workers from Booby Trap on the river. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit or have intimacy with the individuals in the previous paragraph. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these women. Y'all, this is a hot mess and he didn't stop there. Rod claimed that Diddy allegedly had young girls at these famous infamous parties and he provided laced alcoholic beverages beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, and the U.S. Virgin Islands and Florida. He also revealed that Diddy's son Justin allegedly helped Diddy to solicit S workers as well as young girls for the parties, even though he allegedly knew that their drinks were going to be spiked and bad things would happen to them. Well, this is why we weren't that surprised last week when his homes were raided by Homeland Security in association with S trafficking charges. I mean, after five lawsuits that all accuse him of the same thing, it was only a matter of time before the feds got involved. I mean, they had been investigating him for a long time, allegedly, and the lawsuits were probably the final piece of the puzzle. But after the raid, Diddy's lawyers came out to slam the feds and claim that they were piling on Diddy and trying to cause drama for him and ruin his public image. The lawyers said, this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. The federal officer replied to this and said, we believe that there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking. We are responding to concrete, detailed, explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't choose his name out of a hat. We had allegations that we're following up on. But even with this revelation by the feds, we were still wondering why Christian was in handcuffs. I mean, sure, Justin was named in a lawsuit by Lil Rod, and he was listed as one of the defendants in the case. But there was no mention of Christian in the lawsuit, so there was no reason for him to be detained, right? Well, that that's what we thought. But according to Ice Cubes, it's because the feds already knew at the time that there was an upcoming SA charge against Christian. The lawsuit had already been filed and we finally know why Christian was detained along with Justin. The new lawsuit was filed by a woman named Grace O. Markai, who claimed that Christian allegedly SA'd her on the Combs family yacht during a party. Like Cat Williams said, did he go on a party? But you gotta tell him no. You got to tell him no. Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you my. got to tell him no. I, I did. Hell. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm, I'm so I mean, can, freely. Can, 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 I need, can I need no one? But according to Grace, she was hired to work as a stewardess on the yacht that Diddy hired a few days before New Year's Day 2023. So that means that the alleged incident happened in December 2022. According to TMZ, Grace claimed that she was doing her job during the shindig, which she claims was advertised as a family-friendly excursion, and King came on after which she claims he immediately became fixated on her, uncomfortably so. She alleges King had her take a shot of liquor, and she claims she immediately suspected it was spiked, but despite that, she was able to tell him to get off her and leave her alone. She claims King was trying to kiss and grope her, despite her protestations. She claimed that she managed to get away from him after a brief struggle, but then he insisted that she do her job and find a place for him to sleep. She had no choice but to obey him because it was her job, so she took him to the theater to sleep. But once they got there, he cornered her again. According to reports, 
King cornered her again and attempted to force her to perform oral sex on him, but she says she fought him off and includes in the docks photos of her forearm, which she claimed was bruised in the altercation. Eventually, Omar Kai says she was able to escape, but claims to have suffered mentally and emotionally ever since. Interestingly enough though, she is presented by Tyrone Blackburn, who is the same lawyer representing Little Rod. And if there is something that we have learned about Tyrone and Little Rod's case, is that he does not take BS from anybody. His lawsuit on behalf of Lil Rod included some of the big names in Hollywood, like Lucian Grange and Universal Music Group. And that's how you know this lawsuit is going to get real. Interestingly, Diddy was also named in the lawsuit as a co-defendant, but his lawyer released a statement claiming that Grace was lying. But of course that's expected because it's not like he was going to come out and claim that his son actually did it. His lawyer released a statement instead that said, we have not seen this woman's claim, but I'm sure we can expect the same kind of manufactured lies we've come to expect from Tyrone Blackburn and his clients, just as we saw in Rodney Jones's lawsuit, which has yet to be served. He adds, they learned about the lawsuit the same way anyone hears about Mr. Blackburn's filings through the media. Well, Ice Cube allegedly begs to differ in this situation because we're hearing he's claiming that Diddy allegedly knows more about the case than he's letting on. In case y'all missed it, in the last couple of years, Ice Cube has been taking the path to Cat Williams, going over and beyond to expose the shady part of the industry. And this time around, he is claiming that Diddy allegedly forced Christian to S.A. Grace as a way to prove his masculinity. Ice Cube pointed out how Christian has never been in trouble all his life. Even though he does like to party, there have never been any allegations or scandals about him, unlike Justin. Now y'all know that Justin is his father's shadow and has been caught in a number of scandals like a DUI that he got last year and how many times he's been in the news. Well, they're saying that Ice Cube pointed out how weird it is that Christian would get in trouble for something like this, of all things. He went on to claim that Diddy allegedly put him up to it to prove himself, but Christian was unable to go through it, which is why he didn't actually essay the girl. Allegedly, he's not trying to excuse Christian's behavior because it was wrong for him to even think about it, but they're saying Ice Cube did not stop there going on to point out how Diddy has a past history of forcing people to S.A. others for no reason just because he got off on it. Allegedly, he pointed out how Diddy forced S. workers to S.A. Cassie and how he forced Little Rod to hire S. workers even though he didn't want to and how he tried to get Cuba Gooding Jr. to S.A. Little Rod, how he instructed young Miami's cousin to S.A. Little Rod and a whole bunch more. Yeah, allegedly Ice Cube is even pointing out how there were rumors of how Diddy even forced Usher to pimp out Justin Bieber to him. Getting Justin hooked on drugs is a result, allegedly. This is definitely an interesting perspective, given that fans have been talking about it for a hot minute. But for those of you who don't know, Justin Bieber was discovered by Scooter Braun, who was a marketing exec for So So Def at the time. The Scooter found Justin where he used to post music content. Scooter then introduced Justin to Usher, who took him under his wing and introduced him to Diddy. Interestingly though, Justin was only 13 when all this happened, which is the same age that Usher was when Diddy allegedly essayed him. And according to Ice Cube, Usher is still allegedly traumatized by his experience with living with Diddy. And that is why he rarely talks about those times. Howard Stern managed to coax Usher into opening up about his experience that he's living with Diddy and let me tell y'all, Usher revealed more than enough to set off alarm bells in our heads. Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody tried. Tried to... That there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand. But even more suspicious, Usher revealed that his parents had no idea what was going on because Diddy forced him to hide the truth from his parents. You know nothing about this shit. Oh, <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Now at the time, Usher didn't really go into details about what happened to him with Diddy, but he did say that he would never let the same thing happen to his kids. And that's how we know he saw and went through some pretty bad stuff. Would you ever send your kid to puppy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but one of those times he gave us a hint about his experience with Diddy was the time that he had an interview and he was reluctant to open up about it. And the interviewer noted, Usher became surprisingly restrained. I want to save some stuff for my book one day, he said. I'll put it this way. It was a lot of S-E-X. 
Oh, and did y'all see that viral video when Diddy hinted that he and Usher used to sleep in the same bed? Brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying? Or the time he said this. Nobody else gets you, you take your time, boy. I see you. Fly ass motherfucker doing babies. Fuck you in the kitchen. Eating all my cereal. <laughs> so with all this, you think that Usher would keep Justin away from Diddy, right? Especially since he was the one had never put his own kids in that situation. But for some reason, he handed Justin over to Diddy and they even spent 48 hours together doing God knows what. You ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose. Also, it's clear as day that whatever happened between Diddy and Justin made Justin feel very uncomfortable. We started to avoid Diddy. Man, you good? I'm good. How are you? All right, young brother, everything's good. Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, no, you, no. Ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You never really got my number, so. Right, okay. Number. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, made some bold statements in an interview, putting Usher on blast, implying that Usher knew more about the situation than he let on, and had insider knowledge about Diddy's alleged activities. A lot of stuff that Mace or, and, and, and Usher know that they ain't telling about Diddy. There's a lot of stuff that they know. Can you imagine, bruh? Can you really imagine? What you mean by Usher though? Usher used to stay with Diddy too, when he was younger. Well, it looks like Ice Cube is now claiming that Usher didn't really have a choice either because Diddy was playing twisted mind games with him. And that's the same twisted mind games that he was playing with Christian, trying to make him prove his masculinity. But y'all know the streets have been talking about this stuff all types of ways. Saying stuff like, he should have sat there and ate his food. Putting yourself on a chopping block for ish your daddy was doing before you were even born is insane. Now they got you too. Apple don't fall too far from the tree, don't it? And how tapped do you have to be to teach your son to be like this too? Y'all, this is some crazy stuff and I just don't know what to believe. Do you think Diddy was grooming his sons? Drop your thoughts in comments below and then check out this next video.